Okay, today I'm working in this Ranger's Dilutions journal. It's um, the one uh, from Diane Reevely, and it does have the uh, days of the week here because it's a calendar one for you to fill in, and I'm not using it that way. So I went ahead and just covered that calendar side with some paint, just did a little bit of paint down the edge. One side is already done, and I'm just kind of like bringing some colors in because it's a lot of it's going to get covered up. So there's my base that I'm starting with, and I'm doing some uh, collage, and then I thought, well, maybe I should just show you what I'm doing here. I've taken three different things from different magazine images. I like that girl's head. I like this body that was totally on something else. And her dress, if you recognize that, is a dragonfly Tiffany lamp. And then I'm going to use the rest of the Tiffany lamp it would have been like this I'm gonna flip it over and make that into a bird bath with a bird on it and then I found some cute legs in another another image that I had that her legs are gonna go on her like this and then I printed out a um, image this was sent to me um, from my friend in Australia Austria. She put it on her Facebook. It's this beautiful bird. And I have printed it out with my with my little HP sprocket. Um, my brother gave it to me for Christmas last year and I love it. It prints out these little photos that you can peel. They um, are sticky on the back and you can peel them and stick them so they work awesome in journals. But the other neat thing that you can do with this image is you can alter it. So that's what I'm going to do is alter that photograph a little bit and then I also wanted to show that I'm taking some circles that I've punched in different sizes and when I go through my magazines and I'm looking for images like here's a page out of a Somerset magazine from 2007 and it's other people's artwork and it's really pretty but I don't want to use their artwork on my page exactly the way that it is so what I like to do is I like to take different different circle punches and just find parts of it that look interesting and punch out circles out of the item. It, that was a seashell and now it no longer looks like a seashell but the colors and textures are beautiful so I might as well use them in my journal. So I cut out, I take my punches and I just start punching out of the magazine the neat textures even this texture in the background of the layout that's got pretty texture to it so that would look pretty as a circle and you can see if you flip your flip your circle punch over you're going to see what's underneath or what it looks like instead of using your punches this direction and punching you really can't tell what you're punching flip them upside down because then you see you see what's inside so you can move it around and say oh that looks interesting and punch that out okay so I've torn out this part of it with a bird in a nest with some buttons because I have a idea for a bird theme this was a bird on a branch that's a cute circle punched out to use so I'm gonna put that on the page somewhere and then you end up with these scraps and so normally you would just pitch that in the garbage because it doesn't look like much of anything but look at it still got some cool colors and textures so even if I'm not going to use it on this spread I still take my punch and I still punch out as much as I possibly can out of that remaining piece of magazine and I keep them in a little a little box of punched out circles because I mean just look at how cool that is and you can use it for all different interesting things so watch those scraps and don't throw them away if you haven't punched out every possible thing or how about this this word expressions that would be awesome in your art journal so that'd be a perfect thing to cut that out just kind of wildly nothing special and throw that in my box of words because it's a great word to put in my box and it'll go cute on a art journal page somewhere so now I have a scrap that's worthy of throwing away and as I punched out this circle with some interesting pretty texture it flipped over and on the back of it the words that are on it have 
to create see-through edges of the page I inserted to build on nature lovers I mean it's got some text on it that would be really cool on the page too so I'm going to use it the opposite way with the lettering up okay to, so to show you some of the ways that you can distress a photo you can take sandpaper and you can start to sand I'm showing on an edge that I'm going to probably cut off but I'm not 100% sure so I'm going to just show you when you sand that you get a really nice distressed edge it starts to take the I'm tilting it so you can see it scratches it it distresses the edge it takes a little bit of the color out and it makes it not look like such a perfect printed out photo so if you go and you sand around this whole edge what you'd end up with is this really cool see that get that to focus in come on there you go is this really cool distressed edge that you've sanded so you could put that down right on the page just like that and where it's white it's going to take medium like um, watercolor or acrylic paint or anything like that so that's the other neat thing about distressing a photo is then you can brush over it lightly in places where it is white to change the color if you desire to so where this is going to go on my page i've got this bottom part of the um of the Tiffany lamp and I'm going to make it a bird bath so I kind of like his feet to be on the edge of the bird bath and that branch that he's sitting on just doesn't doesn't work out so I'm going to trim that part of the photo that even though I just showed you distressing I think I'm going to remove it and have his feet so that I can put it over this and make it look like he's sitting on a bird bath so then I need to decide if I'm going to trim out the whole thing or just have him sitting on it and still have it be squared that might look interesting and funky so I'll have to see what it looks like when I trim the feet okay so I trimmed out the feet part and the bottom part of the bird and this is what it's going to look like on top of that base that I'm making into a bird bath and I kind of like leaving the top part squared to doodle around it's kind of fun and funky so I'm going to leave it like that and I think what I'm going to do now is do some distressing and sanding around the edge and just distress that whole edge of it just to make it look not so perfect like a perfect photo i love the distressed rough rugged look and these little photos are just super fun for that so And I'm going to do just a touch around the feet so they're not so perfect. And the bottom of the body. Just sanding it a little bit and roughing it up. I like that okay so that's what it looks like distressed around the edges okay so now I'm going to start laying out my collage pieces here's my girl with her dragonfly Tiffany lamp skirt and her cute little legs I think I'm going to put them like that I think underneath here I'm going to put this bird nest It'll be off the page because I'm going to trim it, but I kind of like that under there. Um, I love this, the words from the piece of paper or the piece of magazine that I printed out. And then I've got my, my Tiffany lamp flipped over to make a bird bath. The bird's going to go on top of there. I'm going to put these circles their leaves and branches and birds so I think I may just do something like that cool and it's so it's starting to come together and I'm going to doodle a lot and do my journaling and I've picked out some other of the magazine pieces I just I love the texture 
and they would look good just half on half off the page in some places so I'm picking some of those to use just to add some elements of interest okay so I'm going to go ahead and start gluing things down and um, this leaves me just the right amount of room for doing my journaling. So I'm going to go ahead and glue those down and Mod Podge them to the page. And then I'll come back and show you what it looks like before I start my doodling. And I'm sticking down my images with Windsor Newton uh, Matte Gel Medium. Um, you can use a matte gel medium. You can use Mod Podge. You could use... Um, or glitter glue whatever your preference is the thing I like about the matte gel medium and there are a lot of different brands and I've tried a lot of different brands I like the Windsor Newton um, the reason I like it is because it is it dries very matte there is no shine to it your pages don't stick together quite as badly as when you use my punch um, and it's easier to do a um, collage with magazine images because it does stick the magazine images down nice and flat without uh, a lot of wrinkle to them so that's why I, I'm choosing a matte gel medium. Another nice part about matte gel medium is you can use mediums and different things over the top of it and it works out really well because it's so you can't even feel it on the page I went ahead and put this down with matte gel medium and then I decided this needed a little bit more noise in the background so I used a, a rubber stamp this is a big a big stamp with music on it and I grungy I didn't want a perfect image so I kinda just did it grungy with some um, Ranger archival ink, but look at this see I stamped over this that I put down and it just Takes it really really well over the matte gel medium your image gets stamped right on there And you can't even tell the difference. It's just seamless So just wanted to show you what it looks like when you stamp over matte gel medium Okay, I have most of my collage elements down and now what I'm doing is going along that edge and where the pieces hang over I'm just trimming them off flush with the page the circles that were stuck on like three quarters and they hang over I'm trimming them even and I trimmed this edge down here and now I'm ready to put my my bird photo on and these peel that's what's really kind of cool about the HP sprocket is they're made really for journaling and so it peels and even though I've trimmed it out it's all ready to go I can just put it where it's gonna go right along here where I've got it on this fake bird bath and you can just stick it down make sure your page is dry and stick it down to the page so now I've got my bird on the bird bath. So this is ready now for me to add some elements to it. I think what I'm going to do with her hair is take some black paint and I'm going to exaggerate her hairline. So I'm going to come in here and make some swoops down in. Make this come around her a little bit more down here with a little section onto her shoulder just kind of adding my own touch to it changing it up especially if it's somebody else's artwork piece you want to change it because then it's not the original that they created you're making it your own you're just using elements of it so I'm gonna just add some hair And when it dries, I'm going to doodle it. I like that. I'm going to leave that and let it dry. 
Okay, now I'm ready to do my doodling. I added a number two that I cut out of a magazine because my uh, saying on this page is going to be two birds never seem the, sing the same song. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing my doodling. I've got my circles, I've got some interesting background, my stuck down photo bird that's distressed. It looks great, I love it. So now I'm just going to do the fun part of doodling. So doodling, like where do you get started with doodling? Um, some people are intimidated by that part of of art journaling. I use a Posca pen. I'm going to use some black, some white. And some people get very, um, very hung up in what do I do? Do I outline things? Do I, what do I do to start journaling? I start with that. I start with outlining some of my collage elements. You can outline in black, you can outline in white, you can use a color, whatever your preference is, whatever goes with the page. But I just start doing an outline. For things like these circles, it's fun to do um, dots around them, like a whole border of dots, and they can be big and small for interest. Make, them, make the dots all different sizes. If they're uniform, that looks fun. If they're all different, then that draws some interest over there. I'll show you. So I'm just going around and I'm adding some dots around that circle, that magazine punched circle. And I made them all different sizes. So see, that's just getting started. Just jump in there and just start doing some doodling. Um, I do like to do swirls and things, so maybe I don't want to put my hand in what I just did. So maybe I'll come over here and off this corner. Let me zoom in a little bit more. Maybe I'll just do some, some swirls. And you could color that whole thing in black. You could do your little line work in it. However, it looks good to you. I don't know, you could you color in those swirls. So I'm going to just start playing around. I'm going to add some elements. I'm going to put my words on the page and then I'll show you what I did. And actually, I'm, let me show you the hair. Okay, and so for her hair, what I want to do is to come in here and I'm going to draw some lines in here right on top. Just kind of making that appearance of it being more flowing and then kind of doing a border around it. So it's very doodled. It's not realistic. It's not supposed to be. But it just makes it more fun and funky. And then when you do the rest of the doodling on the page, it'll really all come together. Okay, and as I started to do this, I was getting ready to put the word birds up here for two birds, and I can do that freehand because I love doing uh, lettering, but if you're somebody that you're afraid and intimidated to, you've made this art journal page and you're afraid to put lettering on it just by hand without penciling it first or doing anything like that because you don't like your lettering or you're afraid to letter. What about these old um, templates? Now, when I was scrapbooking, and this was 10 years ago, I had collected a huge amount of lettering stencils because we would use them on our pages and trace around them and use them to cut out little letters before crickets and things were a thing. 
um, we would use stencils to cut out letters. You trace it on paper and then you have to fussy cut them out. Now we have Cricut machines, which that's another thing. Go to your Cricut machine, cut out letters, Mod Podge them down, glue them to your page, glue them right on the page if you want to use some Cricut elements because die cuts and Cricut things are gorgeous. So add them to your pages. So now a lot of us have Cricut machines and you can cut out fancy little things like this and look at how that just adds a really neat interest to this page too. You can do it doodling, but you can also add your Cricut lettering and your Cricut die cuts and things like that. I mean, look how fun and interesting that is. So um, don't forget those things too. Use your Cricut pieces to add interest and elements to your page. Oh, that looks really cool up in the corner. So anyway, but what I was going to say about lettering is if you want to go back to kind of that old school, take a stencil and put it down on your page if you're afraid to write out the words. So if I wanted to use this stencil, I could put this down and trace out the words. Um, let me put the word sing on here because sing is... A word that I'm putting on here so you can just use this and you can use a pencil and you could trace it on and that just gives you a base for doing your lettering on the page if you don't want to freehand it on so then I can take my Posca pen and I can go over this because now I've got an outline image to follow along and the, the letters are going to be very uniform. So that's just another idea is if you have stencils lying around, lettering stencils, maybe you were a scrapbooker, a card maker, get bust your stash. I say that all the time, but hey, get in there and pull out some stencils and use them for lettering on your page. Okay, so now I've got a base for the word sing. And now I have something to follow along as a guide for using my pen, my Posca pen, to go ahead and put that word on the page. And you'll see what it looks like when I'm done. So I'm going to add some of these interesting little die cut things. I'm going to do some journaling. I'm going to do some doodling and I'll show you the page when I'm done. Okay, so my page is coming along. I like it. I'm doing my doodling around my circles. I'm adding some swirls. I did my lettering. Two birds never sing the same song. I love it. That looks cute. And I put down some of these die cuts that I had cut off of my Cricut and I don't like them. I could tear them up, take them off. And one thing I used to teach in my classes when I worked at a scrapbook store, people would get really hung up on, they would be making greeting cards or working on a scrapbook page and they would do something and they're, oh my gosh, I ruined it. I don't like it. And now what I'm going to do. Okay, nothing is ever ruined. Um, even this here, what I thought would look really good. I love how in this um, Tiffany lamp is that really bright, bright teal color. So what I decided to do is just take some teal acrylic paint and a brush. And when I do dry brushing technique, I like to use a really bristly brush. So it's like really um, kind of stiff and very bristly. It works much better. It just makes a really nice effect. And you spounce it in the paint so you don't pick up very much. And then you just kind of dry brush over things. So to change this die cut that I don't like, I don't like that green die cut. It doesn't look good to me. So I'm going to just dry brush some paint over it. You can still see it. It's still 3D. I'm going to do it here too. Light handed. Just the part that's raised is going to pick up more paint. It'll get a little bit of paint on the page, but it's it's just going to add a little something. Oh yeah, see that's, that's much better. I like it. And that's just dry brushing over those die cuts with some teal paint. I 
And it makes them look kind of grungy. Look at that. Love that. Much better. So nothing is ever ruined. Um, anything you do, if you don't like it, you can put gesso over it and paint over it. You can do all kinds of things. So never feel like something that you did ruined the page. So now I'm going to continue on with my journaling and my doodling. I just wanted to show you that little tip before I did it that you can fix things that you don't like or change them. So I will come back and show you as soon as I get this finished, but it's coming along. Okay, so I've done some doodling around the edges and I'm making kind of a doodly kind of a border and then now what I want to do is um, I love the teal in here and for me it's always if you see the first colors that catch your eye is something that you should um, use in your art because um, you want to have those colors dry your eye around your artwork so I'm taking my Faber-Castell pit pen in a bright teal and I'm putting a teal shadow kind of behind her and it's water soluble so when you first lay it down you can go in with your water brush and just kind of blend that out a little bit I don't work it too much because it doesn't really need it but look at how now I have that nice teal shadow right behind her that really makes her pop off the page and I think I'm going to do some around her head over here. Same thing, just put a little down, take my water brush, just patting it lightly. And I do it just along the edge of it so that the part that's closest to her stays nice and vibrant. Let's see how that's just making a nice, a nice teal pop behind her. I really like that. So I'm going to do the same thing down the right side of, or the left side of her leg. I'm going, I keep saying right side. This is all left side. Duh. And okay. This is your right. This is your left. L makes left. Left side. Okay. I got it. So left side of her body. I'm making that teal color down the side. And using my water brush and blending it a little bit for that pop of color. And I like how vibrant and bright those Faber Castell pens are. There, look at how that just zoom out a little bit. How that teal down her left side just makes it really pop so I think I'm going to do down the left side of this leg too so they match and it still <coughs> it still lets the um, the stamped images that I put behind it that Ranger archival ink is nice because it's waterproof so me messing around with a medium over the top of that ink is not moving that stamped image. There. See, look at that. That's really great. It just makes it just really pop out. So I'm going to think I'm going to add some of that over here as well just to get the, um, the bird bath and the bird to pop out as well. Okay, here's my completed art journal page. Two birds never sing the same song. <laughs> it's got doodling, pops of color, some, it's collaged. It's got a distressed photo of a beautiful blue bird. I really like it. Turned out great. I had fun doing it. And I even down here did in little tiny words, sing a song, a sixpence, a pocket full of rye, four and twenty blackbirds baked into a pie. Just from an old nursery rhyme. 
So that's my page. I hope this inspires you to try something different on your art journal page with punching out circles from magazine images. These are all images out of magazine and to do some uh, different and fun doodling. I added some Posca um, flesh color to her face. I gave her some eyebrows. I had some cheeks. I love that her skirt is a Tiffany lamp. I just think that's so fun. And I doodled her shoes. So it just gives you, I did some dots and things, and it just um, hopefully gives you some ideas of some things to do on your next art journal page. And another thing I added were some yellow paint splatters. There's yellow in this that really pops out and it was missing some yellow to tie it in. So I paint splattered in yellow paint, yellow acrylic paint on top of it. So I think that really, really finished it off and ties in with the yellow that's over here. I appreciate you stopping by and watching this video. I hope you hit like and share it with your friends. Uh, donations are 100% um, given to, I donate anything I receive to, um, there are links below in the description to a foundation for complex regional pain syndrome and a foundation for multiple sclerosis. So if you make a donation, uh, please know that your donation will be um, given to those charities for help with people who suffer from both of those ailments. So. And there's also a description in the description box. There's also links of products that I love and that I've used here. And they are, um, I'm an affiliate through Amazon. And so I get a very small percentage. If you click the link and purchase the products that I'm recommending, um, then I do get a small donation. And those are also going to be donated as well. So hope you enjoyed this. Hope you had fun and go make some beautiful art journal pages because art soothes the heart.